as if a magic lantern threw the thoughts in patterns on a screen. Would it have been worth it if one settling a pillow or throwing off a shawl and turning towards the window should say, that is not it at all. That is not what I meant at all. And then he says, no, I am not, I am not Hamlet nor was much friend. So good. The time is appropriate. Yeah. I don't know how much of it I, I can get through, but we'll see. Let's just give me a bit. Let us go then, you and I. When the evening is laid out against the sky. Isn't it, let us go then, you and I, and walk beneath the evening sky? No. Let us go then, you and I, when, when the, let us go then, you and I, when the evening is laid out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets, the muttering retreats of restless nights in one-night cheap hotels and sawdust restaurants with oyster shells, streets that wander like a tedious argument of insidious intent to lead you to an overwhelming question. Oh, do not ask what is it. Let us go and make our visit. In the rooms, the women come and go, talking to Michelangelo. The yellow smoke that rubs its back against the window pane, the yellow fog that rubs its muzzle on the window pane, licked its tongue into the corners of the evening, lingered upon the pools that stand in drains, let fall upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys, slipped past the terrace, made a sudden leap, and seeing it was a soft, October night curled once about the house and fell asleep. And there will be time for the yellow smoke that rubs its back against the window panes. There will be time, and there will be time to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet, and time to murder and create, and time for all the works and days of hands that lift and drop a question on your plate, time for you, and Time for me, and time yet for a hundred indecisions and a hundred visions and revisions before the taking of a toast and tea. In the rooms, the women come and go, talking of Michelangelo. And indeed, there will be time to wonder, do I dare, and do I dare, and time to turn round and descend the stair with a bald spot in the middle of my hair, and they will say, how his hair is growing thin. I'm in my morning coat, my collar mounted firmly to the chin, but they will say, oh, but how his arms and legs are thin. Do I dare disturb the universe? In a minute, there is time for decisions and revisions, which a minute shall reverse. And I've known them all before. I've known them all, the mornings, evenings, afternoons. I have measured out my life with coffee spoons. I know the voices dying in a dying fall beneath the music from a further room, so how shall I pursue? And I've known the eyes already, known them all, the eyes that fix you in a formulated phrase, and, and when I am formulated and sprawling on a pin, and when I am pinned and wriggling on the wall, then how shall I begin to spit out all the butt ends of my days and ways, and how shall I presume? And I've known the arms already, known them all. Arms that are braceleted, white and bare, but 
in the lamplight, flecked with dark brown hair, arms, arms that lie along a table or wrap around a shawl. And should I then presume, and how should I begin? Shall, shall I say that I have gone at dusk through narrow streets and seen the smoke that rises from the pipes of lonely men in shirt sleeves leaning out of windows? I should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling across the floors of silent seas. And the evenings, the afternoons, sleep so peacefully, smoothed by long fingers asleep, tired or it malingers, there on the floor between you and me. And should I, after tea and cakes and ices, have the strength to force the moment to its crisis? For though I have wept and fasted, wept and prayed, though I have seen my head grown slightly Ball brought in upon a platter. I am no prophet, and here is no great matter. I've seen the moment of my greatness flicker. I have seen the eternal footman hold my coat and snicker. And in short, I was afraid. No, I am not Prince Hamlet, nor was meant to be. I am an attendant lord, one who will do to swell a progress, start a scene or to advise the prince, no doubt an easy tool, cautious and deferential, glad to be of use, uh, meticulous, full of high sentence, but a bit obtuse, at times almost ridiculous, almost at times the fool. I grow old. I grow old. I shall wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled. Shall I part my hair behind? Do I dare to eat a peach? I shall wear white flannel trousers and walk along the beach. I have seen the mermaids singing each to each. I do not think that they will sing to me. I've seen them riding. The waves blown back when the wind blows the water white and black. We have lingered in the chambers of the sea with sea maids wreathed in seaweed red and brown till human voices wake us and we drown.